Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today with a fun new video using scraps. So if you're just brand new to my channel, welcome. Uh, I hope if you enjoyed this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and leave lots of comments below. If you have any questions, uh, put any links if there is anything in this video. I'm not sure there will be links down below if I make reference to another video or some kind of material or something that I'm using. I will put the links down below in the description. So at the end of this video, if you want to see how my last project turned out, I had been making, I'm, I'm doing decorating for my son's wedding and his bride-to-be Leah and I are working on it together. So I, she's kind of give me, given me creative reign to do whatever I want for the decorating of the wedding, but I'm gearing it to fit her personality and my son's personality and the whole creative, they're both creative people also. So it's been a lot of fun to work on and I have finished the heart project that we were working on. I have done some things to, to the display that we're gonna use. And so I wanna show a quick, for anybody who's interested in how that turned out, I will show it at the end of the video. And then also the little gift that we're gonna give to the guests, just a little um, memory thing. So the thing I wanted to focus on though is I started trying to kind of clean up my desk before I get moving on to something new. And in doing that, I kind of, I love to organize things and kind of break things down. And I love, love, love working with scraps. I always have, it's almost my favorite thing because you're trying to be really creative with leftover garbage, basically. And I, I don't want to get precious about the papers. These are all um, from scraps from gel prints. And sometimes the hardest thing is to get into tearing something up. Maybe you've created one, like when I was creating all of my papers, they were for the purpose of collage and working in art journals and that sort of thing. But sometimes it's hard or scary to want to tear them up because you love how they turned out. So my idea is to scan them and hopefully be able to use them digitally, offer them as freebies, that sort of thing. But you kind of have to break in, you know, and kind of break that first little bit of fear to tear something up. So that's kind of what I'm going to share a little bit today. So I'm going to put these aside. That's the little uh, teaser. I've been using these bins to kind of store my things, and I'm going to show you ones that I've already started playing with just to get them more manageable. So if you make gel prints, you know, you're doing them on, you know, like, like the last group that I did was on this rice paper, which is nine by 12. Well, it's too big for one thing to fit into the bin size that I'm using. It can kind of fit into the bigger square scrapbook paper ones. But even then, you know, it's, it's sort of different to me visually to be looking through things when I have all this white around the edge you know, sometimes they're not straight on the page or I think that I don't like them very much. Um, I have sorted them by my absolute favorites, ones I want to scan. And then, you know, ones that are like finished, but not my favorites, but they'll be great for collage. And then this last pile, which is this pile, ones that I can still use um, to pull prints, whether I'm cleaning my plate or just adding to these until I feel like I've, I'm happy with them and then want to, you know, take them and use them for the next step. So if you hear a little noise in the background, it's the shoveling, um, snow shoveling. I've got some guys here trying to save us before the rains, um, getting some snow away from the house. So this is my pile that I've, I've already done. And I have a pile here of, um, these were just done on cheap copy paper but I can kind of show you what my process is like to kind of break these down and get them more manageable because you can see they're, they're curling. Um, these maybe aren't as bad, but they're, they're not flat and it's just harder to store them like this. So what I kind of started doing, like I said before, was to make my piles because I don't want to tear up the ones that I can still add to. So like, for example, this one would be a nice finished one that maybe I want to scan. And this, you know, same with this one. These could have other layers added to them, but they're okay how they are. So I kind of just go through, um, this was one that was kind of just used to roll off or one that I didn't like the, the color combination. 
And then I just keep adding to it till I like it. So this would go in a pile of add to. Same with this, you know, I could just use these. These are really pretty just on their own. So I could, I could tear these up. Um, I don't mind them how they are, especially this one I do like. So maybe I keep that in my go ahead and process one. You know, same with this is one that was used to do a first pull and then, you know, just kind of adding adding to it. So, you know, I just make a decision about that. If these, are, these can be added to, this can be added to, you know, and I just kind of sort them. So once I have my piles, I can keep the add to one in my stack of paper for my next gel session. And then maybe these, I'll start with this one. I haven't scanned any of these yet, but let me just show you, maybe I'll grab this one in case I wanna scan. Sometimes you want I want to scan them and have that border, maybe I want the white border on it. But the thing that I found is by going ahead and just tearing, not thinking too much about these, even if it was one that I didn't think I loved, if I tear something off, I'm, I'm basically cropping it. And then I like them all. And there's some kind of satisfaction about cropping them and just that sound of the tearing. And I'm just using a metal ruler to do this. Now you'll notice I am not, you know, I'm tearing off some color too. And that was intentional. When I first started doing this, I was being very careful and trying to keep as much design intact and just tear off the white. But then I thought, then I'm gonna want to maybe just throw those out or scribble on them, you know, and use those scraps for something. But I had a better idea and, and that's what I wanted to share today. So I'm intentionally tearing off an inch or so so that I'm leaving some color on my white strip. And that is gonna make this much more useful. So what I end up with is a nice, you know, this is probably kind of, what size do we have here? It's about a six by eight and a half ish sized piece of paper. So that's great for collage, for using as a background for something. And because now it's cropped, even if it was one that I didn't love before, I love it now, and, and to scan those, I don't have to deal with that border and worry about cropping that on the computer. So I've already kind of done that, and it's a nice size for me to be able to scan. So I'm doing that with all of my papers, and then that way, when I, I can fit them in this little bin, and they're much nicer. I mean, you can tell these, this is a tissue, but these were ones where I was just cleaning off my gel plate you know, that's why there's like a lot of globby paint on there and, and thick texture. But now I it's so much more manageable and I enjoy flipping through these and finding things. So I can sort these further if I want by design or color or that sort of thing. But right now I just kind of find it fun to be able to go and flip through these. I'm gonna still go and um, scan my favorites, which I haven't done yet and then hopefully maybe put them in a kit, that sort of thing. Some of the, uh, this is all rice paper for the most part. So some of them, when I had torn them off uh, before I was leaving some of the color on, I was ending up with just white strips. So I have this little pocket is full of just black and white. So I've taken India ink. You can take any kind of ink. These were actually um, intentional pulls on the gel plate done with just black paint, some stamping, that sort of thing. So that way I have some just black and white to work with. And those little scraps, you can just use um, paint or ink or any a pen, anything you want, and just make little marks. Uh, and just then you have some nice scraps. So that's uh, one thing that you can do with the ones that uh, you may not have a lot of paint on. I had done that on some of these where I just added a little color. You can use uh, water soluble crayons, you know, like a Neo Colors, soft pastels, oil pastels, anything, just any kind of color, uh, paints with a little brush and do mark making. And then I've taken a little gold pen and done some doodling on that. I love to doodle. I find it very uh, relaxing. And so that's kind of what got me going on the, the larger scale project to do with these scraps.
So what I did is I took, now where's my, what I have used um, so that I don't get glue on my mat here is uh, just a piece. This is a backing from sticker paper. So it's glossy and it's it's really thick. I've been using these to do my gluing. Uh, and, and it's nice because it kind of helps me with the size of paper that I'm trying to make. So this is just an eight and a half by 11. And I don't have to be exact about this, but what I've done is I'm gonna use, because I just, this is uh, the regular copy paper I just tore. And you can mix the papers, it doesn't have to all be the same, but I have this bin and it's gonna be shocking when you see how much I've already done. I have this all over my table, it's a mess. I've been kind of sorting it by um, by size, length of painting that I have. So that when I connect them, I don't have to trim too much. So I've been just kind of digging through here, trying not to think about it too much. And I still have this much and I have more scraps laying around here. But what I've done is just take, I've got some long ones, let's see. These are probably, I kind of have a pile I've been making that are similar size. So I kind of just take them and let's see, I'll go this way since they're a little longer. And I just kind of lay them out a little ahead of time, at least a few. Sometimes I don't think about it too much and I'll just, you know, start gluing right away. But I'm just kind of gonna take these out and just lay them like so, just to get kind of an idea to alternate the colors. Uh, and I don't have a lot of rhyme or reason how I organize these, but maybe I want to to visually uh, alternate from dark to light, just to give them some contrast so that it, it makes them interesting. Sometimes if I have, if I see a little bit of color, like this has some purple and that kind of, this one also has a little bit of purple and then it has some metallic. This one has some metallic and purple, even though it has the red, but those kind of all complement each other. And then I could maybe go something totally different to start a different uh, color path, but see this still has the metallic. So there's some relationship between the next one, um, but they don't all have to, I can have them be super random if I want. So I just kind of start pulling out, you know, different ones. This is kind of a turquoise color, so maybe I want to throw this one in, you know, or not. So you just kind of play around, don't think about it too much. And then what I do is just take a glue stick and start gluing them together. So uh, if I want to start, at this end maybe and just put glue and I don't even mind I I kind of want some white to show in between like a, a grout line or something in between and then just kind of pay attention to you know where I'm gonna have to cut them and this is handy to have so that I don't get glue all over my fingers and then just do the next one this one has not much room so if I have to butt this one right up to it just kind of lay it there and you just go right along it's pretty quick to do this if you don't think about too much about what you're putting uh, I try to kind of keep a horizon you know straight horizon line but these are not all torn straight they're not all painted straight because they were on the gel plate so they may be you know really kind of lopsided but that's okay when you see the end result it's not going to matter so you just keep adding until you have your paper uh, and you have it the size that you want so i just try to make them you know kind of a eight and a half by eleven ish it doesn't really matter um, just some kind of paper size that i can work with now, if you want, you can do this right onto a substrate of, you know, scrap paper, uh, and then it, you'll even have it be thicker. But because I'm not sure when I started what I wanted to do with these, I just want to leave them thin. They're all connected how they are, you know, with the glue. So it's just kind of, a, it was a starting point for me, not knowing what I was going to do with these. So my next step was to then just flip them over and then iron so that everything is all flattened, even if it wasn't. And then I was taking them over to my sewing machine. Now some of them, 
I did them in different orders, just depending on what time of day it was, because I always leave my studio at five o'clock to go cook dinner. And so if it was, if I had been doing this for, you know, a while and didn't have time to do the stitching, but I want to take them with me because I sit in the evening and, and do the doodling on them. So I don't care if I doodle before or after I've stitched on them. And you don't have to stitch on them at all. If you don't like sewing or you don't want to, um, just skip that part. But I do like to add that different texture in, um, the thread with the painting. So I do like to, to stitch on them. So what I did next, like this is one that has not been stitched on, but I took it with me last night um, to start doing some doodling. Oops. And I've, I've only done, I think, those little circles on this one, and then I did these little circles. So I haven't done too much on this one. So I wanted to show you kind of a finished, you know, I've, I've trimmed it on my guillotine just so it's nice and, and flat and squared up now. And I just have this nice piece of paper to use for collage or, you know, in art journaling or just on its own, just for fun, you know, to doodle on. So um, that is one. Um, I love how they end up looking like, you know, kind of like rugs, like striped rugs. I just love all the color. And you can see in this one how, you know, some of them are, they're kind of wonky, um, bigger gaps where there's more paint. So this one, I again, I have not stitched on, but I have done, I've started doing some doodling on it. And, and I start, you know, I try not to think about it too much, and that's why I like doing it in the evening. It's really relaxing. It, I'm kind of out of my work brain, you know, in a way. And so I just, I kind of just follow whatever little strips, maybe they were a stencil thing and the line is really faint and I just want to, you know, add another color to darken it up to make it more prominent. And, and so I'm just going through kind of each stripe and doing some doodling on it. This one I've done a little bit more and again, this one is not stitched yet, but you can see I just took the stencil pattern and I'm just kind of adding adding to that and it's all just really kind of mindless um, lots of lines and dots for the most part and outlining things at this point I may get into where I'm doing more and uh, overall doing another design I just haven't gotten to that point but you can see in between where I have the white gaps I'm just filling them in with either gold or black or um, white or silver for the most part that's kind of my first layer and then if I want to add more color later on I can do that but it's just been it's just fun I'll grab one and I just have my little my little thing here with um, I'm using these uh, uniball signo broad in white I've got it in silver and I've got it in gold and so I'm just using those uh, for those gel their gel pens so they work nicely on the paint you know the ones that flow really well this brand seems to do well and then these are just um, my Posca pens so these are the extra fine ones um, I do have some that are a little bit bigger um, but just using those to to kind of embellish this but it's so much fun and I just think they're beautiful I think you know I've turned all these little scraps and I've used every little bit of those papers now and not throwing anything away. And I, I like that. And it just reminds me of my sewing days when I used to do that with fabric, um, doing lots of patchworky kind of things. So again, you know, just filling in the white space with something. This one I did start stitching. And I've only got a couple. I want to do a little bit more, but this was my, my five o'clock, I think, mark that I left. But this one I even filled in some of the stencil with little gold circles and then little black dots inside. So it's just kind of fun, you know, and then just a little bit of extra white space, just kind of making some little swirly things. These I stitched first and then started doodling. So they've got quite a bit more stitching. And you can, you know, change the size even in one line. This is just a little zigzag stitch and I just changed the scale of it and you know, straight stitch and then a zigzag stitch and just kind of mixing it up, that sort of thing, just to kind of give it some interest and texture. Uh, and again, this one is one that I had, had stitched and then started doodling on, but I just, I just love them. They're so much fun to work on. So, you know, you might ask, what am I gonna do with these now? I have no idea. Um, I thought last night as I was working on these 
that I have these art journals kind of built, but I haven't started working on them. And I thought, this is just kind of fun, and I don't really know. I mean, these these could be little pieces of art on their own and just frame them, you know. Or uh, And I may do that. Or, or cut them up, you know, and use them in other collage work. And I may do that, too, or save some of them up for that. But I think what I might do is even um, cut some of them up and uh, put them in those little art journals so that I have, you know, a section might be on one page and on another page, and I can treat each of those lines instead of kind of treating them all the same, just, you know, come up with some different ideas um, to play around and just have it be kind of my own doodle coloring book sort of thing that um, I can just play in in the evening, but it'll be in a book. I kind of like working with things like this loose because if I'm working on something, when I'm here in, in my studio doing it, I have my heat gun right here. So I can, you know, dry something real quick if I need to work on it. What I find myself doing is uh, I'll start on one end, maybe I'm doing something here, and I'll flip it around then and do something here so that can dry if I'm working on one. Uh, if, if it was in a book, I have to kind of work on one page and be careful not to uh, get something messed up while it's wet. But uh, when they're loose like this, I can just work on one, set it aside, grab another one. And it's you're just constantly rotating them, so it's just kind of fun. So that's what I have been working on. I love how they're turning out. I am gonna. I think I'm going to scan, try scanning these um, so that I'll have them available digitally because they're just so colorful uh, and so much fun. So they make great backgrounds, or I can kind of see another boho journal, you know, in my future here. So maybe that's what I do with these. Maybe I kind of doodle them all up and then take the this pile with maybe some other things and and make another little kind of fun journal of some kind using these papers. So that was my, uh, my scrappy project that I've been working on. Now I'm gonna show you real quick a couple of little wedding things in case you're interested. Uh, and maybe I'll turn this light off because it's kind of a glare. So I'll show the hearts next because I've got to take my, I'm using my phone to record and I've got to take it off of its little thing here. So these are going to be the little uh, guest gifts. And originally my idea, we're doing kind of a, what's turning into kind of a gardeny kind of theme a little bit. And I just say a little bit and it kind of evolved that way, partly because for their gift registry, they did instead of like physical gift kind of things, they did one of the things on, I think there's three things on the list and it was for more for cash kind of a gift towards they wanna to plant a garden. And they've started working on it, but um, that was kind of one of the things was they want to work on their garden this year. So I thought it would be fun to kind of take that and do a wildflower. Uh, the, the theme of the wedding is kind of a bohemian kind of artsy theme. And so I, I went ahead and I found these um, just cello bags that were four inch, had a four inch square bottom, which was nice because I wanted to put the jar in there. So I designed this wedding logo. I did not paint these flowers. I found them online. So I, I took these flowers and I changed the color of them and added the little um, gold ring, two gold rings, and then the little information there. And so it just says, let love grow. I did put on this one, the instructions on the back, but I'm not doing that on all of them. They're inside the jar. So it's just a little, going to be a little wildflower planting kit. So I've used um, the little half pint jars and just little like jam jars. So you take the ring off and it took me a while. I'm, the, I'm sharing this because it took me a while to kind of really R&D the whole thing um, because I wanted to include soil and the soil has moisture in it, you know, when you buy potting mix. So I wanted to put a good potting mix inside and anything that I put right next to that was, as far as paper, was bending, warping, getting, uh, absorbing that moisture. So I needed to create a barrier. So I've just used, because I don't have anything more professional, press and seal. And that's this. It's just from Glad Press and Seal. And it's the kind, you know, it sticks, it sticks better to whatever you're attaching it to so that it, you can, you know, put this upside down and it's not going to come off. So 
I just, you know, put it on the top and then trimmed around the edge so it's just in place there. So that keeps the soil from being all over the wedding. And then I just took my instructions and what, what it is and, you know, how to plant them and then what is in the wildflower mix is, is there. And then for the seed part, so I took the, this is the, the lid and I just added a circle so that you didn't see the writing on the top and it would just kind of be a, a nice colorful background. And then I made seed paper hearts. So if you've never done this, if you've never made paper, it's really easy to make paper. In fact, I probably have a video describing what I did. I don't actually show it because it's kind of a messy thing and I don't want to do it in here. I do it in my laundry room, but I've made paper before. So I thought I was going to do seed packets and just keep it simple. But I really wanted to try making seed paper hearts and I hadn't done that before. And I have some more. So I made my decals, which is the frame that you use um, to make paper. You can buy those on Amazon or anywhere. I made my own using just some window screen and I took the canvas off of um, some canvas frames or you can use picture frames anything that's already a frame and you need two of them one has the screen on it and one doesn't have anything on it and you stack those and dip them in your um, paper pulp water so for this because I was trying to stick seeds on it and the seeds are different sizes. It's really easy when they're little teeny tiny ones, but when you get these bigger ones or different shaped ones, it's a little bit harder. So it took me a little bit to, and some of them do still want to fall off, to get them to stick in my paper pulp. Um, so there are other videos out there people have done how to do that, but if you want me to do a video on making the seed paper or paper in general, let me know not let me know down in the comments and I can try to go into it step by step for you. So I took my my paper and I couldn't, be, because these were uh, varying sizes of seeds, I couldn't get them uh, into my paper, my heart pa paper punch. So I just made a pattern using that punch and then just drew around with a pencil and cut them out. It didn't take me that long. So I'm putting two into each one for, you know, the bride and the groom. And then they'll fit nicely when you plant them. That'll give you a, a fair number of little seedlings. And it does work. I am doing the test. I haven't added water to these today, but I have these in the window of my studio. And today is Wednesday, and I planted them last Thursday. So this is six days. And I have tons of little... I only put one heart in this one. I didn't plant two. So you can see I have tons of little seedlings already popping up in six days. So my plan is to let these get a little bit bigger and then try to, you know, transplanting them into their own individual pots so that they can get a little bit bigger before they plant. Wildflower seeds, normally you just throw them out in the yard, but I wanted to do a test in, in the kit to make sure that they were, they were going to germinate and all of that. So... It's working. So that's my heart. And I, I, you know, like I said, I couldn't put anything, you know, right next to the soil and I want them to show. So my idea then was to take a piece of vellum and I printed on it. Uh, it says in a world full of roses, be a wildflower. And that way it's like a little window. You can see the heart through the little window and then you have, you know, some interest with the words. And so then you can just screw that little top on and that holds your seeds there, but you can see these little seed paper hearts. And you can cut, you know, they can be squares, circles, whatever you want them to be. And then I just um, printed out the same floral. I just did it on a square so that it would make my base kind of decorative too and make a nice gift. So I won't tie that back up, but... Um, I really love how those turned out. So I'm going to turn the camera around now and show you the heart. Okay, so here is my finished board. And you can see I used a vintage window frame and I already had that done with the chippy paint. I had just, you know, sanded it and waxed it. I did that years ago uh, when I was using it for jewelry. I had, it used to have little hooks under here that would hang necklaces. 
And I had happened to have used, this is just a foam core board in the backing and attached book pages to it. And they were all, happened to be A Certainty of Love was the title of that chapter. And so it was perfect for the wedding. So I, I did decide I wanted it to be a little more interesting. Uh, you can see where it's just the kind of off-white vintage pages behind against all this color. I kind of just wanted something more interesting. So I did an ombre effect where I dipped this first page is dipped just the bottom half in a turquoise uh, fabric dye. And then the second page is the whole page is dipped in the turquoise. And then the next page, I did the top half in turquoise and the bottom half in coffee. And then the bottom one is just in coffee. So it just kind of gave it a little bit more ombre interest in the background. But then you can see I've done, all the hearts are all for my gel prints. And then I added, if you watched the last video, I stenciled through some um, modeling paste and then have gone over all of those and just enhanced that modeling paste with some shading, with some uh, markers, and then just some different paint pens and uh, metallic pens and that sort of thing, just to kind of embellish each little heart so that it has some uh, more depth to it, to the design. Uh, and I really like how they turned out. They're all, you know, each one is a little different thing. And if you didn't watch the last video, the these are magnetized. So they're all front and back. I've used a magnetic primer and then gone over and painted these with an iridescent graphite paint. And then that way they're magnetized so that we can, um, all the guests will get these little bundles of magnetic words and they can make a little poem or marriage advice uh, and attach it to the hearts so everybody will have a little thing and then they'll be this will be for the bride and the groom to keep you know and look back on and that sort of thing so that's my two things that I've done for the wedding so far and before I get deep back into wedding things I want to do something artsy to share so uh, I'm still going to work on my scraps and kind of finish those up and maybe get something else fun done that I can share with you so uh I hope you have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.